Hi everybody and welcome back to Travel Diaries. So we are the team behind Travel Diaries and I am Pranola. Yeah, I'm Dylan. And these, uh, this is a page that we basically share our travel adventures with you all. Um, so in this vlog here we're looking at our latest uh, country that we have visited and that was India. <laughs> It's also a continent. It's subcontinent of India. Subcontinent yeah. of India. So uh, we're going to take you on a journey of uh, our entire adventure and our time in India. Yeah. So we first uh, arrived in New Delhi. New Delhi. Yeah. It was okay. I can't really remember the date that we arrived there. Wait, wait, I know on. it was early in the morning. It was I do around... have our itinerary. Let's let's pull it up. Okay. Uh, all right. There you go. So. All right. Yeah. So it was Dylan's birthday. And we generally don't uh, travel anywhere because we don't really have we the time we to. We never used to, yeah. So this year we said, said uh, let's go uh, somewhere different. And it was our first time in India. Yeah, first time in India. So as I said, we arrived in uh, Delhi, which was 8th of August. And we spent about two nights there. Yeah, yeah, two nights. So the 8th and the 9th of August was uh, basically an introduction to the country for us. Yeah. So uh, we didn't do much on the first day, really. One of the things I like uh, doing when you get to a new city or to a new country, I generally like to uh, take a walk around or go to a mall that's there. Usually, I like to go to a Starbucks oh, yeah. to uh, get a feel of how the area is. In terms of the friendliness of people, the you know whether they can be approached, to ask them for directions if we lo ever lost or whatever it is, so to have an idea for ourselves. And uh, so once we spent the two days in uh, Delhi, then we were off again. Yeah. So uh, the plan was for us to spend a uh, few nights in Delhi just to get introduced to it, and then we were on our way to Varanasi. Yeah. So at the Varanasi, we went for my birthday. That was real budget, yes. Okay, we just landed in Varanasi Airport and we're going to our hotel now, waiting for our Uber. I think it's like the safest thing, the most comfortable thing for me to use is Ubers. But I know exactly where they're picking me up from and where we're going. Alright, so we're on the streets of uh, Varanasi yeah. and we try not to get knocked, run over by, by yeah, literally. Yeah, wheels. <laughs> yeah, as you can hear. So, we're trying to explore the place a bit. Maybe really grab some street food that won't make Maybe. us sick. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah. Um, Varanasi was a land of, uh, it is a land of spiritual culture. It's the home of spirituality. And us being Hindu was a place that we had to visit. I don't, don't think you can go to India without visiting. Uh, Varanasi because I think it's uh, it's known as the spiritual heart of India. Yeah, spiritual heart yeah, of it's, India. Yeah, uh, the older city. It is. So uh, the Ganges runs through uh, many places. Uttar Pradesh, it runs through, uh, through Varanasi, it runs through Kolkata. Uh, but so we decided it was a bit difficult at first to choose which place to actually go to. So there's tons of research. Uh, and again, you can choose whichever place you want to yeah. go to. This was just a spot that we decided to choose because it was one of the oldest. Uh, places that was known and, uh, in spirituality. Being Hindu ourselves, uh, you know, of course, we wanted to visit a city that was uh, uh, steeped in uh, Hindu culture. Yeah, and that was Varanasi. So, 
uh, there's many guts that you can actually go to and we went uh, you can actually go for the morning hours theme which is not so uh, common to actually find we found this because one of the locals actually told us about that so we decided to go yeah for the morning RT. You can also go for an evening RT. Uh, but be sure and be mindful of which places you go to because sometimes you go to one gut and they may not be doing anything there at that time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which was the gut that we It was actually, uh, I can't remember the name. But no, I remember how easy it was from the hotel we were at. All we did was uh, order uh, Uber. The yes. Uber got there, I, I think, within two or three minutes. Yeah. Perfect. And then he took us down to the guard where they're doing the aarti and then we called Uber again and we went back to the hotel. Sangeet ke dwara. Hum prati very early. Maga gaba vishkat ke prati shraddha hai rakhte hain prati bhali ke baad hum. Anad naad ko naad brahma ki aarti karte hain. So, so in terms of travel in India, it's uh, very easy, especially when you don't know the place so well. Uh, you may be, be able to reserve to use the private taxis that are there or even the tuk-tuks. So uh, at first we were using Ubers and then when we became much more comfortable with the place, we decided to use the, the, the tuk-tuks. And yeah. that was quite an adventure yeah, also. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, you actually feel like you're in India you at do. that time. And uh, so for Dylan's birthday, we booked uh, a tour. Uh, with the Tuk Tuk and like we said because us being Hindu we wanted to experience uh, the spirituality in its wholeness so uh, we knew that we may not know all the places and a, a tour guide a local will definitely know that and uh, the guide we what went did you book with, it with again? No you booked it with the company. Uh, we went through uh, Get Your Guide Get so your guide. I always trust them because from the time we were in London uh, we went to Scotland we booked tours with them we booked tours in London with them yeah. and then we've come back here uh, and then in India, we booked so tours internationally with them also. Uh, known. Yeah, so you can book tours almost anywhere and everywhere in the world with them. And again, because it's one site and it's a very reputable site, very trustworthy site, you know that you are getting uh, somebody that's reliable and safe. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's very important. Especially if you go to a new country or a new city, you want to feel uh, safety more than you want to travel and explore. Yeah, yeah I think that that's also a very, very, very big factor. So. Yeah, so he managed to take us around to, I think it was about four or five yeah. temples in the day. And uh, the one of the, the main temples for me was we went to the 400 year old uh, Hanuman temple yeah. and we got to go on the inside and near the altar and see the, the deity that was there. And 
there's no pictures of that because they don't allow uh, videography or uh, photography there which I understand. They took our phones away. Yeah, they actually kept the phones away in a locker and so on. But I feel it's better because uh, those that uh, like real devotees that really want to go there for, for that reason uh, will go there and experience uh, Varanasi for that uh, cultural... Yeah, for your spiritual uh, yeah. journey more than anything else. Yeah. So that's something that I think uh, is literally meant just for your soul. So it's between it's you and it's uh, the deity that's present there. And that in this fast was Hanuman, who is very close to the both of us. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, going there I think was uh, very special. Yeah, it, it, was, it was nice to be there, especially since we know that it's one of the older cities and you kind of get to feel that you're close to tradition in that way. Mm, you do. And yes, that was one of the temples. We, that was our second temple. The yeah. first one I think was a Ram temple. Yeah. Yes. And uh, so on the walls of the temple, uh, they have the... I'm terrible at remembering these things. Uh, but it's one of the scriptures, and I think it was a Ram Leela that was written yeah, all on the, on the walls of the temple. So it's something that's very amazing to actually be a part of it, actually witness for yourself. I think we do have a few videos of that. Yeah, it's been there for, for, yeah. for many, many years. Many years, yeah. And yes, yeah, so that was our temple tours, and then we went to uh, the university that was there that also houses one of the main temples. Yeah. Uh, that was a Sh oh, that was a Shiva temple. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yes, that we was got amazing. to uh, put the garden. Yes. So uh, if you're not Hindu, um, there's something that they do f uh, in respect and honor of uh, the deities that we worship. So it's it's kind of like an arti. It's kind of like a, a offering that you do, uh, especially for the deity Shiva, where you pour milk or uh, an offering uh, of a garland of some kind of sweets yeah. that you that you what, what, take and go to, into the temple. Yeah, on a on a like an object called a lingam, a shiva lingam, yes. which is the most uh, spiritual part of uh, Shiva's form here on earth. Yeah, so we got a chance to actually go into the altar, and uh, they allowed us to put the garland onto the lingam, which was something we haven't really done in a temple per se before. Yeah, this was the first time really, yeah. yeah. So we're quite surprised that they actually allowed us to do that, which was yeah. quite nice also. And then... Okay, so we just got caught up in uh, quite a bit of rainstorm on our way to the next temple. So hopefully it comes on a bit. But we are at uh, a temple that's known as uh, Mother India. So this was a uh, temple where they started guys in like the late 18 to uh, get the country back from the This is the temple of the stuff that really happened. So they dedicated to the temple. So you look at it as West Spain, Mother India, as in Mother Spain. Undivided map of India, where India, Pakistan, Bangladesh together. And this is the Bay of Bengal. Yeah. And left side you can see the Arabian Sea. And the below the Sri Lanka, Indian Ocean. Right. Indian Ocean. And you know there's a Ram Setu. There's a Ram Setu from Tamil Nadu to Sri Lanka. Lord Rama, he made a construction in the, uh, in the sea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Rama, Rama, Rama. Yeah, there. Stone. Still there, but inside the ocean. And the scientists had proven that long time ago, 5,000 years ago, Lord Rama, he made a, you can see the bridge, and still the bridge is inside the water, ocean. Yeah, so after the, the temples, we uh, then moved around. I think we, we tried uh, a sweet lassi <gasps> on the roadside. Oh God, they, yes, we amazing. just jumped out of the, the, the tuk tuk that we were in. And then I think you bought that pan. What? No, not pan. Oh, yeah, sweet pan. So, uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> so uh, our travel guide had told us don't try the pan that has tobacco in it because it's not like smoking a cigarette. Apparently it's pretty it's different. It's a lot worse, yeah. It's more intoxicant than that. Yeah, it's, it's pretty strong. So uh, we were like, I was ready to try it. Yeah. And he's like, no, 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 on your first try, don't. So we stayed away from the, the tobacco pan. But if uh, you want to go for it, uh, if you're a smoker or if you like tobacco, then you can try that. Yeah. Uh, so we just did the sweet pan. And that's quite nice. Uh, it's the, the bitter leaf, where the bit of a sweet in there and a nice little sweet syrup also. Yeah, yeah, but I think you like the, the sweet lassi oh, more. Oh, sweet lassi. That's my absolute ultimate favorite right now in India. Uh, you still need to make that for me. Yeah, uh, you get the recipe. The recipe. Uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know, I, I, it was the, I'm not sure if it was the heat, but that just literally cooled me down. 
it was sweet, it was tangy, I, it I was I think that's, that's the aim of that, uh, yeah, uh, to cool you down yeah. in, on a hot summer's day, especially in a you know, sub-continent uh, like India, the experiences heat the way they do. Uh, that sweet lassi kind of like helps out in terms of the heat. Yeah, amazing. it does. The ancient, ancient weaving techniques, it's called the jacquard machine. Have you heard about Maria Joseph Jacquard? No. So Maria Joseph Jacquard, she invented this kind of machine. Yeah, this is the machine. You can't buy from the market. You have to assemble it. This is the traditional one. And this part you can't buy from uh, in market. Not available. And this things is available here. They main, maintain here, they repair here, everything by hand. I call someone to show you. <laughs> so, this is our weaving technique and this is our hand loop. In Hindi, we call khatti. Yes. And right now we are making sari here and this is the back part of the sari. Because when we make any pieces, the back part is upside and right part is under the knee. Oh. And all the design control from this design card. We call punch card. And all the design is like a hole here. And it's like a code. And this machine works only decoding the design and then separating the thread according to the design. But what time, which color you using? We were no who sit here because here they sit oh, and they operate the pedal by the feet. And put the yes, put the different color. Wow. And whenever you want to change the design, we just change this card and design automatically change. How many cards? All this. Oh. All this. That's a lot. Yes. And you know, sir. In Varanasi, we have no any industry. Here we work like cottage industry. Maximum people they work in their own home. Oh. We provide them raw material, design, they finish, bring here. We pay the money according to the work, like that. Oh, then you make it here. Yes. And whenever we There's want no to change the design, yes. No factory, like cottage industry. Mm. Yes. At this place, we have got only two room for demonstration. Our main work in there. We make lots of things here. Around here? Uh, 20 km from here. Okay. Because this is the city area expensive. We cannot keep so many, so many looms here. Okay, so we have just come to see how uh, the silk banana side is actually made. And we've just learned that everything is hand woven. Uh, it's made by uh, the local community. So you said you have over 200, uh, 200 homes. Uh, that actually come and weave all of this uh, designs and all the sides that you see here right now. So it's not a big factory, it's a mass produced, it's something that's very rich actually. And this pattern we call Chal work. And there is Meenakari. Yes. Silver and gold very we call Meenakari. So this is the gold? Gold color. Because multi color of oh. work we call Meenakari work. On the same border here, on the pallu. An entire body will get the work like this. Right. And this is the blouse. Small blouse. Yeah, so that was Varanasi, and then I think we spent two nights in Varanasi. Yeah, we did. Yeah, that uh, obviously the, the day of my birthday, and uh, then the day after we left. We left. Yeah. yeah we left. I think we arrived the day before your birthday. Yeah, we arrived at the day yeah, before. But it was quite late in the afternoon because of our, our, our flights, and uh, I'm not sure everyone knows that when you travel, especially after a flight, you just want to take some time just to relax. And, You'll see the place and get yourself yeah, aligned with it. Just. And yeah, so after Varanasi, we were then off to Mumbai. Yeah. One of your favorite places. Yeah, but it was a, it was a very annoying flight. <laughs> that's for sure. It was full because we had chosen a Friday. Uh, I think because we thought we were on holiday, we were like, okay, yeah, let's just we go the days, <laughs> And uh, it was uh, very close to Independence Day. Oh, yes. Which meant yes, uh, yes. higher security and uh, longer waits at uh, the terminals. So, uh, in India, I think this is one of the airports that we have found that does the most amount of security checks. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, true. even things like your charging cables and I know one of them, they stop me from my makeup brush. Yeah, for me the umbrella. <laughs> umbrella. Yeah, so he doesn't have to open his umbrella in the airport. Show him that it's an umbrella only. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I don't blame them though. I mean, I guess every country has their own rules and we have to be respectful and mindful of them. So uh, the one thing you need to prepare for when you go to India is be prepared to literally take everything out of your hand luggage. Yeah. So we got used to that. Just but like three times actually. Yeah. yeah. So when you check in at first and then 
uh, before boarding, they do a check sometimes, but most times we were, uh, the entire flight was getting checked. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, but uh, the one thing I, I like about India flights is it's very convenient, and we use an app called Indigo. Yeah, I actually like that airline a lot. I do too. Uh, you can get a chance to choose uh, a meal on there, which is called a tiffin. I love the name, by the way. It yeah. sounds so cool. Uh, so you can get a quick little snack on the flight. Uh, the flight itself, the, the plane was uh, very nicely uh, done. It was quite very new. Neat, yeah. And booking was absolutely easy. So you can just get the app, get your boarding passes off there, go in there. Um, they also have face recognition. Face recognition to make sure that again, secu uh, security measures are, are met and quite high so, yeah. as well. And so, you know yeah. exactly uh, which seats you're in, they bring your whatever you've uh, chosen to eat to you. And you get to order a uh, drink. I uh, generally choose a can of Coke, which was, it wasn't a small can. I assume, like, yeah. if it's, a, it's an airline, it's a short flight, they give you a smaller can, but it was actually quite a large it was can. Quite big, yeah. yeah, I always go for juices, though. But obviously, that's not the Coke. But yeah, that was quite nice. And like I said, uh, you could use Indigo. We'll put all of the links in the description below so you guys can check them out. Also, if you are visiting India. So yeah, off to Mumbai. So uh, let's see where we to Mumbai. That was on so yes, the day after your birthday. So the next day we didn't really do that much because it was just a basic exploration of Mumbai. Yeah, just like a drive around the area just to readjust and see what the difference is between the different cities like you know New, New Delhi, uh, Varanasi and now Mumbai. Uh, because we know that's more of the metropolitan area compared to the others that we went to. Uh, I like Mumbai a lot. We spent quite a lot of our time there actually. Uh, and like we said, the first thing we do is just didn't like to go for a walk. I had to find a mall. Yeah. So we found a very nice mall in there, which became uh, a place we frequented. Yeah, yeah, we've been there a few times. Yeah. Uh, they've got a lot of the mainstream uh, brands that we know, uh, international brands, uh, international restaurants also. So um, just to kind of adjust to local cuisine versus uh, your home country cuisine, you can get a chance to actually do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah because there's McDonald's and KFC and uh, so on. So it's like, um, if you don't know what to eat, you, you, know, you stick with what you know. But India is the land of food also, besides spirituality. Yeah. Uh, I think I've done a lot of eating in India. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of food there's to go through. It's amazing. And I think every time you try a different cuisine from a different area, uh, I, I can't really choose a favorite of mine. Yeah. Which place I like enjoy the most. Yeah, I'm not really a, a foodie, <laughs> but I, I do like nice tasting food, to put it that way. <laughs> nice tasting food. Uh, yeah, and then we went off to the next year, I think it was, uh, oh, Juhu Beach and street food. Yeah, that's what we did. Yeah. That's what we did, yeah. So it was really, really hot. Yeah, really as hot. always. Always in India. And busy. And busy. So uh, we didn't really want to swim, all that I really wanted to, but it was a bit too hot uh, and we went in like middle of the day. Yeah, feeling uncomfortably uh, sticky and so on. So yeah. You don't really want to uh, get into the water at that time. And it was quite busy. Yeah. Was it a Saturday? I think it was, yeah. Yeah, so it was like, really, really busy. Yeah. And yeah, we got a chance to try... Oh, Faludas! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Faludas we had, that was really nice. Yeah. That was really good. What so, else do we have there? Uh, Faluda? I think that was it. Uh, yeah. They were just like trying to walk around and look for stuff to eat. Yeah, Juhu Beach was uh, nice to, be to see, like, uh, you know, people being up. There's... A Juhu Beach that's there and then there's some nice restaurants all around the area so uh, but if you want to walk there it's, it's very hot. It is hot. We tried to go to Prithvi Cafe. Yeah we did go there it was a long wait and I could not wait in that line. Over an hour wait so yeah. if you uh, Prithvi Cafe is uh, one of the local cafes that originally was a theater and then eventually the cafe grow, had grown from it and they say it's a place of local celebrities. So yeah. you find that, no, lo local, sorry, Bollywood celebrities. Bollywood celebrities. So uh, you can find quite it's a few. local to them. Local to them, yeah. You can find a lot of the celebrities actually frequenting there. You just have to be lucky on that day. Uh, so that was our kind of plan to try and see who we can manage to spot. But like we Malaika didn't. Aurora. <laughs> we didn't manage to spot Malaika Aurora. We didn't? We didn't. Oh. Didn't oh. manage to spot. Oh, John Abraham for that matter. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, so we didn't really do an uh, advanced reservation, but if you're going there, please book in advance. Because I think that's one of the mistakes we had made. Wasn't there like a QR code? Uh, you can do it online, yeah. So when you are there, you can do a QR code maybe, uh, get your uh, reservation number, and then it tells yeah. you your wait times. So ours is over an hour. Yeah, so we, yeah, we really and couldn't wait at the time. And, yeah. Uh, just being those fine, we got to see what the place was like, and then... It's a 
very pretty cafe. Yeah. And then very we went back uh, to the hotel, which was a very, very nice hotel. It was. Oh my God, yes. So the hotel that we stayed at, uh, it was called T24 Retro. Retro. And it was quite near the airport because, uh, again, like we said, when you're a bit unfamiliar with the place, you want to be closer to the airport because we found that uh, driving to and from there may be uh, quite lengthy with and, the traffic. Uh, traffic is insane. So always be mindful of your travel time to your airport mm -hmm. or to the hotel or wherever you need to go to because sometimes you may be sitting in the car for two and a half hours. We did. Like we did. We did. Uh, yeah, that was pretty exhausting. So, um, yeah, so the hotel, it had uh, a lot of retro vibe. I mean, it's in the name, it's yeah. retro. So you had these little uh, old phones with those... I don't know what that is called. Those the dialer. Dialer that you like turn, uh, and then it had uh, the the lift. The elevator had the the gate to close the door, and it's not like one of those you just press the button and it opens automatically. You actually have to physically open the door, but that was done on purpose. And the gate. It was, but that scared the life out of me the first time I went into there. Uh, but it was very safe because it only moves, starts moving when the gate is like locked and engaged yeah. and this little. It closes automatically that way. Thingy. That part. Was yeah, yeah. So th that was a pretty cool hotel, and again, links uh, links will be in the description below. So uh, I really suggest you visit that hotel. Uh, the staff was absolutely friendly. You get yeah, room very. service. There was a nice restaurant down with uh, live music playing at different times. Yeah, yeah. Different they did. bands were yeah. coming in. Uh, very vibe. Very. You could uh, also order food from yeah. uh, using the. What was your favorite? Room service. No, not room service. Oh, uh, um, 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 uh, Zomato. Yeah, so Zomato is one of the common apps, uh, food delivery apps that's used in India. So if you're feeling a bit lazy, you don't want to go out, uh, log on to Zomato, download the app, and you can get food delivered to your hotel. The hotel depends, I think. Yeah, which we got um, McDonald's delivered to us oh God, that was amazing. twice. And yeah, it's obviously a lot cheaper from buying from the hotel, yeah. you, especially if you don't feel like having a, you know, a, a decadent meal. Just, you just want something to eat to survive for the day, then yeah, that helps. Yeah. That helps. So I tried a paneer burger from McDonald's for the first time in my life and that was absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely that was that. nice. Um, yes, yeah, so that was Juhu Beach and then uh, we did a few temple tours the next day. Yeah, but uh, we went to the gateway of India. Uh, yeah, we did, but before that thing we went to the temples, Isha Yoga. Uh, Harak well, Temple. the Isha Yoga Center, Center. we went to Center, in Mumbai yes. because uh, the main ashram is, is, is in Coimbatore in Tamil Nadu. So but we did manage to go down to uh, the Isha Yoga Center. We bought a book written mm -hmm. by uh, Sadhguru and we spoke to the people that were there and they explained to us that uh, you know they, they never know where Sadhguru is and um, <laughs> sometimes he's there, sometimes he's in the US and so it'll be difficult to tell even if we went to Coimbatore, he may not have been there. So. Yeah. We just decided not to, not to do that. It was quite a bit of a distance to actually travel down. Uh, yeah, and then uh, so we went to the Iskon Temple. Iskon Temple. Uh, so I was Iskon devotee for many years of my life. So actually going to where uh, it originated was quite nice to see uh, the dishes in there, to see how uh, practices and are done is very different and compared to South Africa it's and so very on. Very different. Yeah, yeah. and. Um, yeah, the layout of the temple was quite nice because they find like they had the whole Mahabharat story as uh, like live, you know, figures of of what they were saying, what stories they were telling all around yeah. the temple. That was quite nice, uh, a nice artsy scene to actually see. Yeah, that was nice. It obviously was yeah. again very busy, but there's a lot of uh, different ways to get food. You can obviously wait in line and get food for free, which they normally serve, yeah. or you can stand in line and buy the samosas and kachoris and. Uh, things like that. So I mean, whenever you travel, you find that uh, I think it depends on uh, like which area you're coming from. Whether you're traveling in the northern hemisphere to northern hemisphere, or from the south to the north, like what we had done actually, we went from the south to the north. So we had come from winter directly into summer. Summer. So that was the day that we weren't feeling too good. Yeah. The day after. It was really hot. It was hot, and we had sinus that was bothering us. So. I think for two days we were kind of out. Yeah, we had to stay in the, the hotel yeah. for the entire time of that, just to like recover and get back uh, on track again. Yeah, so it was just allergy medication and sleeping. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, then there was the gateway of India. Yeah, right. Yeah, so we managed to get, actually get ourselves back because we're like, okay, we have to try and make sure that our health is better so we can travel and not spend the whole time in bed. Uh, so when we actually find up to get out, 
uh, we went to the cafe of India. Yeah. Alright, so we are at the cafe of India. And it's boiling hot, like everywhere else. Yeah, that's see the sun's out at least, that's good. Right? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, the sunglasses out. Too. Yeah, okay, so this is behind us. So they said that this was built in like 1911, 1912. Yeah, some colonial era. Uh, yeah, because it was the first time that King George V visited India. Yeah, so uh, they built this in order to commemorate his visit. Yeah. So in his honor. In his honor. And elephant caves. Yeah, elephant caves. We are going to Elef Elephanta Caves. Elephanta, whatever. Elephanta, Elephanta Caves. It was said to be named by the Portuguese. Oh, yeah. The Portuguese Conquest. Portuguese Conquest, yeah. So they named it because they thought it was full of elephant statues at first. But going inside, as you can see, it's not. Yeah, so now we're going on, uh, we're taking a ferry ride from the gateway of India to get to Elephanta Caves. Of the boat journey. Yeah, the long boat journey. There's like an hour, almost an hour. Yeah, it's an hour there. So yeah, you can uh, when you go down to uh, Gateway of India, you find there's a lot of people actually mulling you around. Buy tickets there. Yeah, so there's hard tickets. It was cheap. It was around uh, 250 200, rupees, 200 I think. Rupees. Yeah, yeah. It was. So, I mean, it depends on the currency you're coming from, uh, but it was pretty affordable. So we had a chance to. Um, like find somebody that was just there, they offered us the ticket uh, and then we said, okay, let's go on the boat. So the boat ride was quite nice because you get a chance to uh, go into the ocean. Uh, it was a nice scenic route. It was, I mean, in the ocean. So it was a one hour cruise and you get a chance to see Mumbai skyline uh, from, from afar. There. Yeah. Which is quite nice. <coughs> but it was hot. It was hot, but it was also nice uh, to be out there, get the breeze and go into this, uh, those new places. Very, um, what do you say, traditional. Traditional, yeah. So, I'm dying. It's so hot. Hot. It's a long walk from the entrance after the caves. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you have. Yeah. yeah so we're more tired. <laughs> Uh, Elephanta Caves was named because the Portuguese actually, when they had come through, uh, they had found this temple in the caves, literally. And before they entered, they saw a lot of elephants. So in Hinduism, uh, we have one of our gods that looks like an elephant. and has the face of an elephant. An elephant. So that's, that's Ganesha. And uh, because they had seen elephants, they had called it Elephanta Caves. Yeah, Elephanta Caves. That's Which is still called that way, that's that name, by the way. And yes, yeah, so I think going in there. So as you go in there, you still walk up. So the walk up to the caves. So I always say, I was saying the last time, there's three challenges when you go to um, Elephanta Caves. The first is uh, the heat that you get over because it's all around you. The second is the walk. And the third is the monkeys. <laughs> so if you're afraid of monkeys and you don't want to be near them because you're afraid that they'll take your stuff, they will take your stuff, <laughs> so you don't have to go there. Because I had a bottle of, not of this, of uh, Fanta. Fanta. And a monkey literally came and took it away from me. <laughs> you a monkey jack. And jacked. ran away. A <laughs> magba monkey. And he took it away. And then after that, I was terrified to put my glasses away, put the camera Phones. away, just in case they take it. I'm not sure if they do take those things, but not sure what attracted them to maybe there's a color or whatever so we put that away and we just continued walking up the stairs which again was another challenge in itself but if ready for challenges and <laughs> as you go up again as you reach the elephant caves part there's more monkeys so just don't make eye contact don't feed them just walk straight through and go to uh, the elephant caves part where you need to be 
it's uh, not a very big area. It's a small enough area that we can go and take our pictures and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, it was. And as you're walking through, you walk through a market which is covered. Uh, so you can get a chance to buy a whole bunch of souvenirs from there at a very reasonable price. Uh, they always say in India it's art of negotiation. So you can kind of try and bargain with the person who is selling the well, items, the with the yeah. vendors. Uh, and you find like if you bargain enough, they will be very compromising and they will actually decrease the price for you. Uh, but we managed to get quite a few nice souvenirs from there. Yeah, you can use your card, international yeah. cards and so on, or you can carry cash to make the transaction a lot uh, easier, faster. And uh, we, I think we paid entering there about three times. Was it three? We paid when we entered the, at the bottom part before we get to the vendors. 20 rupees. And then we paid on top right by right near oh, yes, yes, yes. the Elephant Cave itself. Yes, it was two entry payments. Uh, the main entry into the temple itself and into the monument. Uh, I cannot remember the price of that right now, but we will put that up on the screen. Yeah. Uh, when I do manage to get back there and find out how much that cost. Uh, but if you are a, an Indian citizen, you find that uh, places are very discounted prices for you. Uh, if you are an international traveler, you will be paying a bit more. But it is still very affordable and I think yeah, these places is. shouldn't be missed. Yeah, it, yeah especially uh, there's such a rich uh, history to our it. There has to be a part of that. Yes, the Elephanta Caves uh, is a dedication to Lord Shiva. So uh, you find uh, absolutely huge, the huge rock yeah, caves uh, and inside of the, the lingam. The lingam, yes. And everything is literally caved from that rock. So that's why they call it Elephanta Caves because the entire temple is built in the cave and it's carved yeah. from the cave itself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which was amazing to see. Yeah, I mean, the, the architecture, architecture behind yeah. that. And, and you know, they and the lasted so many years. I mean, literally thousands of years. Yeah. Which is really incredible. Yeah, so. Um, after that, we, we drove by, um, what is it, uh, Bandra Wally Ceiling. So that was a very nice uh, part of the beach on the coast. So you can get amazing sunsets from there. Uh, but we were a bit tired and a bit dehydrated from the day going to Elephanta Cave. So uh, we didn't really stop by there. But if you are around the area, if you have energy, if you have enough time, uh, stop by there for a sunset. It, it's apparently one of the most beautiful sunsets you can ever get. Yeah. Okay, so that was our time at Elephanta Caves uh, and the Gateway of India. Yeah. And like we said, it was uh, definitely quite a good experience and uh, something very nice to see because you're part of history, a long history, which was quite nice. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the next few days we took it a bit easy. Yeah, we were just like going in and out of the malls and so on. Yeah, some light shopping. So what are you having? Because I couldn't get away of my western ways. I took KFC, but the Tanguri KFC was on. Tanguri Zinga. Pepsi. <laughs> I didn't need to hate it because we still had to fly back to Delhi. So, in terms of uh, bag and weight, uh, we couldn't really buy too mm. many souvenirs. We bought some small things um. from this, the, the mall that we went to. They had a real, real <gasps> nice uh, store that yes. was there. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, so, it was called the Bombay Shop. So Fun fact for you, uh, Mumbai was originally called Bombay. So you find that when you're around, the locals may still even refer to it as Bombay. Bombay. So it is called the Bombay store. And we've got a whole lot oh, of my handbag here with me. I got this cute little purse from there. Uh, we bought a whole bunch of souvenirs, our t-shirts. Mm. <laughs> I like your one a lot. Um, we bought some souvenirs for family. Uh, yeah, that was... Pretty, pretty cool and it's very really affordable. One of the best um, souvenir stores that I came across. Yeah, because they had like a variety of items like, you know, that can suit every single member of your family and like I said, very affordable. So, uh, yeah. And then, what did we do after that? Oh, so, me being a Bollywood fan from the time I was like a little girl uh, and being in India where they literally live and Mumbai is the heart of Bollywood. Uh, so, I decided to try and see if I can stalk a few of them, <laughs> which failed dismally uh, but there was a cafe uh, what was it called a farmer's cafe oh yes farmer's cafe so I originally uh, I was just like researching places where the Bollywood actresses, uh, actors and actresses actually hang out and I came across this one here and Shai Kapoor has been one of my favorite Bollywood actors from the time I was like a little girl uh, so this is one of the uh, cafes that he frequented quite often so we took our chance and we went there <laughs> only to realize that it was 100% organic yeah pure veg no, was it? was pure veg. Was it? Yeah. No. I can't remember. 
Oh, okay. no, it wasn't. It, it was wasn't. organic. Organic, organic. Yeah, so uh, we ordered drinks from there that, uh, well, I like, I quite liked it. I ordered like a coconut water, which was like beer that you can actually taste the coconut. And there was no Coke <laughs> because I tried asking them and they were like, there's no Coke. Yeah, so, uh, but I mean, like, if, if you're into the whole organic thing, uh, there are a lot of places available. If you're vegan, if you're vegetarian, India is very big on that, so you yeah. definitely will find food. Uh, if you go for the non veg so like chicken, uh, beef and uh, lamb, that kind of stuff, you may have to ask for it. Yeah. Well, no, not really. Well, yeah, okay, I think place dependent. Uh, so yeah, so we visited that, that cafe on the day. Um, I'm trying to think of what else to do. Let's go back to our itinerary. So, uh, that was farmer's market. Uh, and then the day before we left Mumbai, we just had a bit of a chill day. Nothing too hectic. Yeah, just to uh, relax a bit because uh, make sure we wake up on time for to get ready for, to go for the flight and so on. Yeah. And we're gonna be too tired being in the plane itself. And yeah, we were off to uh, Delhi again. Yeah, we were off to Delhi again. Uh, yeah, so our flight. I don't know why I can't really remember the flight back. Uh, was it an early morning flight? I think it was about. Uh, 11 or so. Okay, so it wasn't early morning. But we left early in the morning to get yeah, there. To make sure the a few hours earlier, yeah. and traffic and all those things. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so then we returned to Delhi and our, on our last leg of our India journey. Um, and our last leg, we said we'll spend a few days in Delhi and then we'll leave. So uh, this last part for us was basically just doing a bit of sightseeing in and around Delhi, yeah. uh, shopping. So we, we stayed at um, Holiday Inn Express, which was nice, which was basically in like. Uh, a shopping mall kind of complex which oh, is yeah, nice to be in, nice, a, yeah. in a place like that because we didn't have to take uh, Ubers and move around to buy things we could just go down and get some food from different places and, and also get some souvenirs and uh, the hotel was uh, was quite nice to be in and uh, compared mm -hmm. to uh, the Mumbai and the first New Delhi uh, hotel that we went to yeah, uh, which I one was really better? Recommend that. Uh, so the first time we flew into Delhi so Again, we were quite afar doing all of these uh, research and these things for booking hotels and stuff. So uh, it looked quite nice online, but when we got there, I wasn't really a fan of it. Yeah, same. I was a bit uncomfortable because it was under construction. So as we got out of our room, uh, there was like a big vacant kind of space in the wall. We could kind of see the outside. outside. Yeah. Um, and the Wi-Fi wasn't working. Oh Wi-Fi was terrible. That was the good, terrible. pretty important so, thing. So, yeah, I wouldn't really recommend that hotel. Uh, it was quite close to the airport though, so that was a bonus. Yeah, that's the that only plus about it. Yeah, and we got breakfast. Yeah, and yeah, there you look outside and you're just seeing uh, a busy road the entire time. It was obviously not the best, uh, not the ideal uh, location. And where we, uh, the second stay in uh, Delhi, where, where you look out the window, you saw the, you could get to see the nightlife a bit better. Yes, the city. The city, the city lights, yes. the, the building lights and all those things. So it actually felt like you, you know, you in uh, a city. In a city, yeah. I mean, I, I think different parts of India show you different realities. Um, so it depends on where you want to be. I have a, a very busy metropolitan area, a bit of a quieter part. So I think I prefer the bit of the quieter part. Yeah. Uh, and the Holiday Inn actually gave that to us. And it is an international brand, so it has a certain standard. Yeah, to our hold. Yeah. Uh, so being in the mall was quite nice because you just literally step out there. You've got, you've got restaurants, uh, you've got souvenir shops, and then we found a very uh, cool uh, sweet shop. So when we say sweet, in India is a bit different. It's more like uh, your confectionery. So yeah. they had uh, all the Indian kind of delights. So it was like barfi, it was gulab jam, gulab jam. it was uh, sweet lassi, again, my sweet favorite. Lassi, they had um, coconut ice, and it was like a Diwali store, but like all the time. <laughs> Yeah, so we, I think we went almost every day and bought something from it. That yeah. was dessert. Yeah, yeah, that was dessert. And it, it comes in small pieces, so it wasn't a lot. And we, some of the other got lucky enough. We tried to see if we can bring some back home and get it through customs, which we did. Yeah. That was quite nice to bring back some stuff and share with everyone around us. Um, oh, yes, and then we went to go to Taj Mahal. Yeah. So that was one of the main attractions of Delhi for me. I know there's many there. But on my first, on our first time visit, that was what I wanted to do. The Taj Mahal. Taj yeah. Mahal. So which is in uh, Agra. In Agra, yeah. So again, we booked a tour. 
So uh, we use Sketchy Guide because, like I said, that's one of the trusted ones that I've uh, we've personally worked with for yeah. a, a while. Uh, so yeah, we were picked up from our from hotel. hotel. Yeah, in the morning. In Just fact, like we that. got to choose the time, so it was like yeah. seven seven a.m. in the morning, and uh, it was quite affordable. In fact, uh, I think if you're counting in. Uh, in pounds, it came to around forty-eight pounds to fifty person, pounds yeah. per person for both for the both of us. Both. Yeah, it was twenty-four pounds. <gasps> yes, it was twenty. Okay, yes. Sorry about that. It was twenty-four pounds each. So I mean, it is very affordable because you're getting literally picked up at your hotel. It was just the both of us. So it was like a private tour in an air-conditioned car, which is really important. Yeah. So the cars give you an option to choose air conditioning. Please choose that because you'll make a huge mistake if you don't. Yeah. And we were with a guy that was very, uh, you know, well informed. Again, local guides always, uh, for yeah. me, I think the best. It was and a nice uh, road trip. It was about it three was. and a half hours going there, yeah, and you get to see uh, the sites of India as you go, the different um, areas, different cities, different villages that you pass through. You pass through Vrindavan, Vrindavan. which is obviously uh, world renowned for Krishna being born in, mm -hmm. in that village. You get to pass through all those places, Mathura as well. And uh, you get to see the village life, how people like live, you know, go about the daily, uh, daily lives. It's kind of nice to see that because you're in a different country, you want to experience what uh, it's all about. Well, yeah, exactly, from like the heart of it, more than just what the tourists or what they show to tourists, but actually how do people really live. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so then we picked up our second guide who were, who came with us into Taj Mahal. So uh, we basically had almost like a driver that took us from Delhi to Agra. And then we picked up our guide who was uh, in charge of, uh, or took us through Agra basically. So Taj Mahal was our first stop. Okay, so we are on our way to the Taj Mahal in Agra. And we do a small tour of Agra and Agra. Trying to get our tickets now. It's quite busy here, but let's see. They do the job from the open. I also look from our left side is the main entrance of the building, it's called the Royal Gate. Royal the gate, gate is a look like the rectangle and the square, but actually the gate is cute. It means the height, deep, and wide are equal size. Oh. Okay, so we just outside the Taj Mahal now and we just learned that uh, if you stand in the center of the courtyard, every site you look will be uh, identical in terms of its architecture and it creates a sort of optical illusion that uh, everything is equal in size and everything actually was equal in size. That's very fascinating to actually learn. Rozai Munabbara, the real name of this building, but the people are to convert this name is Taj Mahal. <laughs> Mahal means palace. People are living inside, not are laid inside. Oh, okay. So there are two graves in the center. One is the queen and one is the kings. Oh, in there. In there. So Taj Mahal is nobody can living from this building. Only the grave on this. So we have to put shoe covers on our shoes. Going to the temple, so each and yes, getting in, they offered you a bottle of water. So, trust me when I say, please take that bottle yeah, of water. You'll need it. Even if you don't like water, you will need it. <laughs> well, I like water, but I at that point I didn't want to carry anything with me, so I was a bit afraid. Like, oh, I won't need it. Getting in there, I, was, I, I died. And they also search you quite a lot in India, going into malls and uh, places like that. So, even when you go to uh, the Taj Mahal. You got your camera with you in your bag. Uh, keep your phone and wallet or purse in your hands, and put the bag in there. It goes out on the other side just to make sure everything is uh, what you have with you is uh, safe to be in a in a place like that. And they just to safeguard everybody else in there. Yeah, so that's basically that part. Yeah, so uh, security. So the Taj Mahal is literally one of the wonders of the world, and we got a chance to personally see why. Yeah. The way the architecture has been done, the way it's been planned, and in terms of uh, history with the Persian dynasty and uh, the Mughal dynasty afterwards, and how it's kind of changed to what it has become today, which is a world renowned uh, national monument. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Taj Mahal is uh, basically a, 
a place that you find the emperor had built for one of his uh, favorite wives and because he was like deeply in love with her so when she had passed away he had built this and it's a mausoleum not actually a temple so i think that that's a very common misconception people think it's a temple it's actually a mausoleum so yeah. when you get in there and again no phones or recording no videos so we don't have any footage of that uh, besides the outside of it uh, but getting in there you just feel like a sense of uh, you know it's like calm yeah it's and cool as it well it is cooler the places in there and they call it the, the place of love so um so when you get in there you actually feel that kind of love energy in there because the entire place was built based on love yeah so um in ancient customs you find that an emperor was uh, or should have been built at the center of a mausoleum so literally absolute dead center of but the dome of the dome yes uh, but uh, the, the emperor uh, of the mughal dynasty at that time he put his wife at the center yeah and she did die first and then when he passed away his son said uh, since his father loved his mother so much he put her next to him yeah he put him next, put to, him her. next to her put him next to her <laughs> put him next to her so and that literally shows a testament of uh, true love and how uh, it can carry on yeah. uh, through centuries and that's time. how it's uh, been viewed all these years and that's why they say it's around 60,000 people that visit uh, the Taj Mahal every day, every day. Yeah. So that's okay. oh and, and, and uh, a fun fact that our guy had told us about was that uh, it doesn't actually get cleaned it's literally one of the cleanest places we've ever been to it has white marble and everything is sparkly and shiny but they don't clean it. Yeah, you do wear those shoe covers when you get in to make sure the cleanliness is kept, but no one actually cleans it. And uh, however the writing is on the wall, whatever they've written on the walls, uh, it uh, was not used, uh, there's no paint used, nothing. but nothing has faded for, I can't remember how many years. Over 300 plus? Yeah, years we'll, we'll, we'll put that up just to uh, make sure it's correct. But yeah, that was, uh, well, one of the best parts of knowing that mm -hmm. how they've created up there. In fact, they've uh, used marble that was around 400 kilometers away. Yes. And they brought it all the way to Agra and they built the Taj Mahal. Yeah, and I think uh, a very fascinating architectural design of, of the Taj Mahal is that they say whichever part you look at it, so if you have OCD, this will please your OCD yeah, like, will, to the yeah. max, where literally every corner matches you find if you stand on one end, you'd see the exact same thing as if you were standing on the other end. Uh, they've built it, they called it the optical illusion actually. Yeah. Just stand in the middle, I mean, you're on the outside, and if you go with the guide, they actually would show you all these things, which we were very, at that point, grateful for our guide, because we realized that we may have just walked past these things because we don't really know that much about it, so he got a chance to actually show us much yeah. more in detail. So you get to appreciate the architecture, which is uh, the main, I think, sell point of mm -hmm. the Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal, yeah. And um so it depends on, on who you go with but our guy had also uh, managed to know somebody uh, who was uh one of the the generations of people whose whose parents worked for or worked in the construction of the Taj Mahal so they had actually opened up a store in which they focused on marble uh, souvenirs uh, marble designs and when we got in there they actually showed us how they uh, constructed the, the Taj Mahal in terms of engineering. So how they uh, pasted uh, these parts of, of the colored little emeralds the and marble. crystals and marbles all together, how they shape it. So that was very interesting. And then we also got a chance to buy a little uh, souvenir from there. We bought a Taj Mahal. Uh, it's, a, it's quite a little small, but it's, it's very nice to you know, keep on display as uh, a memorabilia yeah. so that you are there. <coughs> First, ma'am and sir, welcome to my update factory. Uh, here, I'd like to explain you about this work. How it was done with the past man. So here, we are doing the same work. With same kind of marbles, oh. same kind of glue, same kind of tools, and same kind of simple stones, which was used in the past man. Okay. Okay? So first of all, sir, uh, we take this white Indian Makrana marble and that marble we get Makrana, palace of Rajasthan. This is 350 km far from here. Okay? 350 km. Sorry? 350 km. Far from here. Okay. Wow. Okay. 
and you can see uh, this uh, this guy he birthing. Uh, he is the descendant of the those family who had the father to son to grandson. Oh so, wow! Generations. Yes, generation to generation, and there are only two, three, four people for demonstration. Okay. In that time, you can understand how we are making, and 1,500 people we have defected. Uh, they are working over there. So these ancestors like birds. Yes. Wow. Percent. Wow. And the 1,000, I will say 1,500 people. They are working our big factory. So this is the first demonstration. Now right. come to the stones in my hand. These are real cemetery stone. I already say are uh, used in the Taj Mahal. And some stone we get India, and some stone we get out of India. Do you know? Name of the stone, name and some, and give it idea. I know there was uh, okay. the. Okay. I will pick up. In that time, you can tell me. What is that? Is that a malachite? No, no. sir. Mm -mm. No idea. Any idea? This is sky blue turquoise. Oh. And this one? Emerald. Emerald. No, before what? Uh, before malachite. The... Oh. That's but I'm telling him. But. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is malachite. Green one. This is shining one. Is mother of pearl. Oh. Huh. What is that? Copper. No but this uh, look like a wood, but this is not wood. This is tiger eye. Tiger eye, so see tiger eye. Tiger eye. Amethyst. Not amethyst. Uh, Sapphire. Oh, this is not amethyst. Sapphire. Cobalt. Is, Cobalt. Huh? Cobalt. No, but I think this guy he goes uh, close to. Uh, I never do this one, but I don't. I don't. It's like grey, but it's not. Yeah, I'm saying that, but. But in, uh, in your brain, but you forget what I said. Yeah. Uh, that one is blue lapis lazuli. Oh, okay. oh okay. no, lapis yeah, lazuli. same. This one? The ruby. No. This is cornelian. Oh. Cornelian. Or is it oh. ruby? Cornelian, this is the very famous one in the past. Oh. Cornelian put that on the top and underneath the blue glow. Oh, oh, that's oh, one that glows. That's why we call local language five stars. Oh. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of marble stuff, and then... That's where our tour basically ended. No, there's one more thing we did. We yeah. went down to uh, where they make uh, the cashmere, yes. uh, the scarves and so on, and where they handcraft it. Oh, okay. Can you see? Because it's hand woven, it can easily heal by itself. Oh my god. Oh, wow. So that is the beauty of it. So this so is the, pure cashmere. This is the sign of pure hand woven cashmere. So, if anything happens, it can easily, easily repair by itself. That is something interesting part of it. Oh, wow. So that... Yes, handcrafted. So, uh, yeah, looking at that, so again, it was somebody whose who's generations of ancestors before him also worked in the same kind of uh, field, so it's been passed on from, from generation to generation. Um, where they hand hand wove those scarves. So you know the cashmere scarf is one of the most popular scarves, one of the most expensive scarves materials, in the world. Materials yeah. to uh, actually yeah, buy. Uh, so we got to actually see the home of it and uh, where they uh, design it, where they actually make it. So uh, cashmere, and then we we bought a souvenir from there. Uh, the pashmina scarves. The pashmina, yeah. Your favorite. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so seeing all of this and how it's made and how to actually identify it was quite nice. Yeah, definitely. And uh, the fact that the, you know, generations of families are still continue the business today and uh, the same craftsmanship that was used, you know, 100 years ago, so still being used now. It's nice to be a part of that and actually get a souvenir based yeah. on that because you may never get a chance to do that again. That, that <laughs> It'll hold. Yeah. Like this one. This one. Okay. Hold the thread in this hand. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Hold back. Then you don't. Oh. Any place else? From anywhere. Yeah. 
So, like that. Shake with that one. Can you see? It's in the middle. How is it? Intricate. Yeah. There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so all those together will make uh will make the pattern and keep going. Yeah. And keep building up. Oh, right. I'm confused Just be careful. Watch your head. Head, head, head. Secondly, the quality You're very good. of a good handmade carpet. All is depending at the back, as there is saying, "Don't judge a book by its cover." <laughs> so this is the front of the oh. car. Because the more it's a hand machine made carpet, they put one plastic, so you cannot see the design. Yeah. Now you see this, the front. You see it from the back. Same. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
every single one we were trying to say, can I see that? And I didn't expect them to actually open on every single one, but they did. Uh, so I was just, uh, we can get a better look of it. So yeah, that was quite nice. I think we did a lot of shopping in the markets and like so you can get things uh, very much cheaper as compared to the malls. Yeah, much cheaper. Much cheaper yeah. than the malls. And you can also grab some food there if you want to. Uh, yeah, so that was pretty much our last day in Delhi. And the yeah. next day was the day that we left, so. All right, so this is our last night in India. Last night in uh, in Delhi, so we're just taking a walk around the mall where we're staying near. And let's see what we can get or eat. Yeah, so um, just grabbed a few sweets from like, one of my favorite stores here. Uh, hopefully, we take it back home. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, uh, overall, how was your experience? Just as it was uh, obviously coming from a country like uh, South Africa and coming from the UK as well, uh, this is a bit of a, like a culture change. Um, yep. But yeah, I mean for me, it's just the roads that are just always very busy and the heat. And oh, there's only two uh, yeah. negatives, I would say. But that the overall experience was really nice. Yeah, something same with me. The heat, you know, yeah. a couple of tourist like spots now. like now. But I think uh, a few of the tourist spots like uh, Taj Mahal. Well, like I yeah, totally died. Hot, yeah. Couldn't make it at all. So uh, I think the tourist season really come, it's going to be quite hot. Maybe winter, maybe a bit easier. Might, might be, yeah. They, they said that if you come around uh, May and June, I know it's, it's hotter that time, but it's a drier heat, it's not as humid as they were saying. So maybe it will be better on the, in those days. But I mean, overall, that, that was a part of the experience, I guess. It was, yeah. yeah. I mean, we've always had India is quite hot, so I think yeah, to experience it the first time was quite nice. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, to it be was. a part of it. And the shopping. Yeah. I love the shopping here. Yeah, there's like different things, and uh, obviously, I'm not really big fan of food, but the food was nice. Nice to experience uh, the the food more authentically. Yeah, from the different uh, regions in India, not just say Indian food, but like specific to the region. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was quite nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so all in all, I think it's a, a very nice destination to visit. So if you ever do get a chance, do so. And it's usually a life-changing experience. Yeah, that was the same thing, yeah, that's true. And the yeah. next day was the day that we left. So we got up quite early in the morning, uh, packed our stuff, uh, got to the airport quite early because it was an international flight. Yeah, just to make sure. Yeah. So overall, India. Yeah, I feel uh, that was a nice experience, uh, you know, getting to see the way they drive on the roads and uh, how people interact with each other. It's different from uh, other places I've ever been to. And it was nice to uh, experience that uh, culture, especially a culture that we kind of come from. And you kind of get, uh, you know, attached more to your roots in that way, going to the temples, going to the oldest city in India. So I, I liked it a lot in terms of uh, the tradition and culture that it had to offer. I think same with me. Uh, getting a chance to you know experience your roots. I think every person should uh, you know visit where the ancestry line comes from. Get a chance to actually see how it is. I mean we know you're part of your your current country, your current nationalities. But also to see you know how our ancestors lived and how they uh, the world currently looks right now. Yeah, definitely. So that was quite nice. Like you know experiencing the the culture of it, experiencing the food, uh, experiencing the type of uh, you know gestures that they use, transport systems. Yeah, so for me, I think uh, I really loved the visit to India. I would definitely go back. I can't actually wait to yeah, go yeah, back definitely. and visit the most spots. There's a lot there. of other spots that we that obviously that haven't been. Uh, we, we wanted to go to, but we didn't get a chance to, and uh, definitely we want to go there again sometime yeah. soon. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and enjoyed our journey to India. Uh, if you have, please be sure to like and subscribe. If you've gone to India, please comment below and let us know where you've gone to or where in India we should be visiting next uh, because we will definitely be planning a trip in the near future and yeah, please yeah. Be sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can do that now while you're there and we will see you in our next video.